Members of the school committee, I'd like to uh, thank you for your participation. Uh, it, it, it is six o'clock on Thursday, uh, and I will actually, before we start the April 2nd subcommittee for the finance meeting of this Brockton School Committee, I'd like to read into the record the following. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency, on March 12th, 2020, Governor Baker issued an executive order temporarily suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, which is Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Pursuant to the order, public bodies are temporarily relieved from the open meeting law's requirement that the meetings be held in public places, open and physically accessible to the public. So long as measures are taken to ensure public access to the body's deliberations through adequate alternative means, this finance subcommittee meeting will be held and will be accessible to the public via Brockton Community Access BCA, Brockton Public Schools website, which is www.bpsma.org, YouTube, and Comcast Channel 12. The public can access this meeting via this link, https slash slash www.youtube.com slash user slash the Brockton channels slash live. And I want to thank uh, Melinda Campbell for her efforts on coordinating this. And uh, as we did at last week's full school committee meeting, I need to take a uh, roll call vote to, uh, to vote under the revised open meeting law. Mayor Robert Sullivan is chair. I vote yes. Mr. D'Agostino, vice chair. Yes. Ms. Azak. Yes. Ms. Mendez. Ms. Mendez. Mr. Menicello. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mr. Get it? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. Judy Sullivan. Yes. Thank you, Judy. Uh, is Cynthia on the phone? Yes. Thank you, Cynthia. Is Mr. Minicello on the phone? I don't see him. Okay. So at this time, we do have a quorum. There is a roll call vote relative to the open meeting law. Now I need to take a roll call vote again just to verify the quorum of the school committee members present. Chair says yes. Mr. D'Agostino. Yes. Ms. Azak. Yes. Ms. Mendez. Cynthia. You're on mute. Yes, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Ah. <laughs> Mr. Minicello, not present. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. And I'll ask Superintendent Michael Thomas for a vote, even though he's non non voting member. Yes. Thank you for being here, Mr. Superintendent. With that being said, we have a formal uh, quorum, and we've already adopted the revised open meeting. I'll go on to the agenda for Thursday, April 2nd, 2020, it being 6 p.m. Uh, the agenda number one is COVID-19 financial update, and I know we have the different administration personnel on. Number one, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'll have Algo come on. He's been in uh, several conversations with the School Business Officers Association, who have had several calls with um, Mr. Sullivan, who is the uh, business officer for the Department of Education. Um, so I have Aldo come, come up and just give us a, a, an overview on uh, where we are overall financially as we move through this uh, closing and crisis. So thank you, Mr. Aldo, could you give us an update? Thank you, Aldo. Can you hear me? Uh, you need to be a little louder, Aldo. How's that? Is that better? Yeah, much better. Much better. A couple of uh, phone Zoom conferences like this with the Department of Ed. And so far, what we have been discussing, our number one is the transportation vendors, like for a student. Um, the Department of Ed is urging us to make some sort of payment to them. Our rebuttal for myself and I know Plymouth and a few other cities and towns is until we receive something from the governor or from the attorney general saying that we can basically um, not follow the mass general laws, we can't send, we can't agree to anything, we can't pay them anything. They've been lobbying hard. I know they've been calling the mayor, emailing the mayor. They've been calling myself. They've been calling the superintendent. 
But my first reaction is they should be filing for unemployment if they're looking to pay their drivers. But number two is we have no authority to make a payment. Even if we were to process a payment, the city auditor would not sign off. There's no authority to make a payment for services that have not been rendered. So that needs to come from a, a state agency that would basically waive um, our current contracts or waive the, the current mass general law that says you must receive a good or complete a service. So like I said, we've had a couple of conversations on that. The same conversation um, I raised at the end of it, what about out of school districts, out of school you know, special education programs? Again, the Department of Ed is urging us to pay those, those um, schools you know, the school for the blind, the school for the deaf, all those special education schools we send children to, even if they don't have children there, they're, they're, they're basically saying it's no different than us sending kids to Southeast Regional and they take our money, us sending kids to the charter school and they take our money. Same thing with school choice. They're saying it's the same thing with those schools. Again, all the other schools we send to are pretty much nonprofit. So they're almost in the same arena as we are. I don't know about these out of district schools, if they're for profit schools. Um, the, the, my reaction when I said to Jay Sullivan about paying their bills, I said, how do I know if they're profit or not? And why should I pay them the full amount? He agreed that we should negotiate less of a price. And his, his reaction, if any of you know Jay Sullivan is, yeah, you shouldn't be paying for those nice manicured lawns that they maintain at their schools. You know, we should not be adding to their, basically their, their, their Give, promising them their profit. So I think that's another discussion that still has to happen because those schools, um, our special ed director, Laurie Mason has sent me a list of the schools and the services they are providing. Again, the students might not be there, they're providing some services, but I think we need to negotiate um, how much we'll pay them and for what services. Again, uh, the conversation I wanna have with all of them is why aren't your staff collecting unemployment like everyone else in the Commonwealth. Why are you looking to the Brockton Public Schools to bail you out? Again, from the Department of Ed, they're basically saying, well, if we've given you Chapter 70, we expect you to pass that Chapter 70 money along. That's true, that's 80% of our money. The other 20% comes from the taxpayers in Brockton. So you, you, they can't force me to pass that Chapter 70 money along. So that's where we stand on, on those two fronts. Um, those are the largest of them. Currently, I've been keeping track, um, even some of its estimates on money we've spent between making handouts for children, um, the um, overtime and getting those, those laptop computers ready to hand out, the lunches we've been handing out. We're probably between $150,000 and $200,000 expended um, so far on the, the coronavirus, it was COVID-19. Um, I think that number will go up a little once I actually start pulling all of the actual pays. We created a special pay code in our Munis system so I can easily pull out all those people who we paid during this time that we're here. Again, the first two weeks we started out as emergency services. We thought we'd only be closed for a short period of time. So now that we see that we're gonna be closed for a longer period of time, we're probably gonna rework and rethink how we um, continue our payrolls from here till June 30th, where we're paying people but no services are really being provided. So that's something- that Hi, Aldo? Yes. Aldo? Hi, it's Tom Minicello. Um, hi, everyone. How you doing? Hi, Tom. Hi, um, Tom. So, with respect to, I, I spoke to Aldo about this the other day. You know, the district now is obviously spending more money and needs to spend more money with regard to technology and um, you know having our kids basically dialed in and providing them with devices. So, I mean, I hear what um, Aldo was saying and with regard to. Desi and, and they want us to pay, you know, these outside vendors and things. But I think we really, I think Aldo really needs to uh, take inventory of, you know, what, how much we're extra spending for these kids, what we really need to spend more this year because of obviously um, where we're at. I, I honestly don't think that, uh, I don't, I don't think we're going back to school, but whatever. Um, I, I just think that we need to, before we can start negotiating and, and negotiating away the monies that we have, for services that we're not receiving, we need to factor in the the, um, the technology and, and the and the services that our our kids need today, and the taxpayers have paid for um, before we start giving out money, you know, to these people. Um, you know, again, I feel symp sympathetic towards everyone, but you know, our, our our kids need to be dialed in as as opposed to some of these other, you know, municipalities who 
have more uh, for their kids right now and have more going on technologically wise. But so, so to me, this is our opportunity this year to provide more than what we normally would because we have to provide more in order to try to get our kids, you know, um, I guess, um, engaged, so to speak, you know. Um, thank you. I just want to let the school committee members know um, I've had multiple conversations. I actually had a, a teleconference with Aldo this morning as well and with Troy Clarkson, CFO on the city side, asking them to keep an accounting of every penny spent, you know, absolutely every dollar we need to account for uh, in terms of anything we spent uh, for COVID-19 uh, relief endeavors, uh, including the laptops that we're going to distribute to one per family. I want to have a dollar value of each laptop just in case on the off chance we don't get those returned. And there has to be a percentage that we won't. We know that. Um, and Mike Thomas, the superintendent, has just really given me wonderful updates as well. But just to kind of circle back from what Aldo said, I concur with him. Uh, we're not obligated to pay anything. And unless the attorney general for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts or the governor uh, does some type of, uh, uh, you know, executive order, uh, we're just going to stay the course from a legal perspective. And, you know, we feel for those folks. And as Aldo said, as the mayor, getting inundated with calls and emails saying, you know, pay me, I drive for first student. And I, I understand that, but they don't work for the city of Brockton. There's a contractual obligation between first student and the city of Brockton. So, um, you know, we need to follow what Attorney Minicello just said to do a, uh, uh, a true accounting of every dollar. But again, I just want to thank Aldo and Mike because um, they spent hours and hours on this. And I know there's a lot of um, uh, administrators on this call as well. I know Kim Gibson from the BEA as well. So. Um, although any additional uh, information you want to give uh, relative to the agenda number one? Sure. I, I kind of jumped ahead on a couple of things I shouldn't have. But um, on number one, on the financial update, the big part of it is the paying of employees. As you know, we've um, agreed to continue paying all of our contractual employees. And anyone that was hourly with the urging of the um, Department of Ed, what we've done is looked at anyone that's worked continuously for us since January 1st till now. We've come up with an average number of hours. And we continue to pay those employees that average number of hours. So we've had a couple of kinks in the road, which is every check has to be mailed out if they're not direct deposit. So some people's addresses have changed. They never notified us. So things are bouncing back from them. We're getting them their checks or issuing them replacements. But aside from those little kinks, it's gone very smooth. Um, not No real issues or problems. Um, everyone is continue, continuing to receive their paychecks. That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, members of the subcommittee, school committee, any questions for Mr. Petronio relative to agenda item number one? Mr. Sullivan, you have to unmute if you want to ask a question. Thanks, Tim. I have one question for uh, Eldo. Sure. When the time comes, we're going back to school. Uh, would you think it'd be a good idea to have some kind of agreement with that school bus company so they pick the kids up? Well, we have an agreement that's in place, but I assume between now and then, um, we'll get direction from the state on what on how to handle this and which way to go. It just when the day comes and when we're back to school, we're gonna need those drivers. Yes. I was just wondering if there's something that could be done. Mr. Sullivan, I don't, I, 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 I hear what you're saying and I'm a big union guy myself. So I don't think that uh, we're saying, you know, we won't consider all options. Um, just right now, our hands are tied from what we're told legally. Um, but I concur with you, you know, if, and when the time comes and if the Brockton public schools opens again uh, this, this year, um, which it may or may not happen, we don't know. Uh, we have to be ready, willing, and able to provide transportation. So that's a conversation I've had with Mike, Thomas, and Aldo as well. So I hear what you're saying, and I, I truly appreciate what you're saying. Okay, thank you. Any other questions relative to agenda item number one? If not, we'll move on to number two, which uh, Aldo somewhat touched upon, but it's the BPS laptop distributions. Mr. Superintendent, would you like to opine on that in any way? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, first, I want to thank... Um, uh, um, Ken Thompson, Dr. Cobbs, uh, Dan Vigent, um, the executive team members, and all of the um, our principals, assistants, uh, principals, and all the other volunteers that helped today at every school um, to give out over um, about just about 4,000 laptops. Um, 
and uh, people were very um, gracious and uh, thankful, um, um, anxious to get them, so um, to get their student, their ch children working online. Um, and so we really appreciate everybody's efforts in getting that done today. Um, luckily, the rain held off until later in the day, which really helped us. Um, but now we are in the process, uh, Dr. Cobbs has a team of people. He's gonna gather the extra laptops um, throughout the district with uh, Ken Thompson tomorrow, uh, get them back up to Brockton High, um, and then we'll start phase two, which will be um, people that didn't have transportation, families that did not have transportation to get to the schools today. Um, we will also work, we're working with Karen McCarthy from, um, who takes care of Title I and our homeless families. We're working with Kelly Jones for bilingual students and for Laurie Mason with special ed students um, to see who did not get a laptop that definitely needs it. Uh, we also have some homeless shelters that we need to get the laptops to. So some of these um, will be delivering to homeless shelters to make sure those students uh, have laptops that they need. So that's phase two that we'll be rolling out on Monday and Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I just want to thank the team uh, in the IT department for all their hard work of getting this done today. And uh, it was a um, heroic effort and a lot of work that went into it. So I just want to thank them all um, and really appreciate their hard work. And it was done in a very safe way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people never got out of their cars. Um, we were able to register people and keep track mm -hmm. of the laptops we were given out through our text message system mm -hmm. and um, which went through the phone, cell phone. So, uh, it was orderly and it was safe for not only the uh, the parents, but also for the staff members that were passing out the laptop. So again, I just want to thank everybody for those efforts. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Any questions uh, for the superintendent relative to agenda number two, which is the laptop distribution? Uh, just to let you know, uh, when I had a meeting uh, with Mr. Petronio, he informed me again that um, the school, uh, public school system actually hired Ockers a while back to uh, superimpose the BPS uh, emblem on each laptop. Uh, several years back, there was some theft. Um, so again, I, I want to thank uh, everybody from the principals to the administrators to the people that actually uh, handed out the laptop. It's going to make a difference to the families in the city of Brockton. So. Um, thank you for that, Mr. Superintendent. We'll move on to number three, if we could, which is the uh, MOUs for unions for April 7th to May 4th, 2020. Mr. Superintendent, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so Dr. Moran is working with the presidents of, of the unions um, and also executive team members um, and also um, our attorneys, uh, Kevin Bresnahan, and Sarah Spadafore, um, and also working with um, the HR um, assistant directors to put MOUs together. Um, at this time, as you know, um, pretty much 97% of our employees um, um, have been pretty much working from home, um, but there are some that need to physically come into work, um, which we'll start to put in place uh, on April 7th um, and beyond. Um, and there are, you know, a majority pretty much 90% of our employees will continue to work remotely. Um, and others which, you know, like our custodians we're working with that will be coming in to work in the buildings. Uh, so this will all be put in the MOUs going forward and um, Melinda will put those on the agenda for Tuesday night. Um, I believe those will have to go under executive session. Uh, right now there's been about 50 union employees um, that have been working, as you know, food service workers, um, we are obligated by law to serve as a free um, lunch system. So we were obligated to get that up and running right away. Um, and there was some IT staff and some, and just, uh, I think four um, drivers who drive the um, refrigerated trucks who have been working. Um, so, and the, all the others who have been, um, and obviously, that's people, I mean, physically coming in and working. Um, obviously, we have an MOU with the EEA, and uh, they have been working remotely and doing a great job. And then, obviously, a principal's executive team members, non-union, have been working mostly remotely as well. But we've had about 50 people, um, including the principals, who have physically come in to do some different things. So we're working on the MOUs, uh, put those in place, have them in place by uh, April uh, 7th, and we will have those to you um, 
for Tuesday night um, for the school committee meeting. Thank you very much, Mr. Superintendent. And before I open it up to any questions, I also want to thank, as, as my role as mayor, I want to thank Mike and, and the school side because, um, of course, the Board of Health only has one health nurse uh, that works for the Board of Health. And with the COVID, as of I speak to you right now, we have over 240 confirmed cases in the city with, unfortunately, two deaths of, uh, of some senior uh, citizens here in the city. Um, but I did reach out to the superintendent um, and some school nurses. There's a total of eight school nurses that are working in collaboration now with the Board of Health, and it's really, really beneficial. And I want to thank the school committee, and I want to thank the superintendent and everybody on the school side uh, to assist. It's just, uh, it's really lightening the load for Board of Health, and it's really a collaborative approach. So thank you. Yeah, I want to. Yep, go ahead, I, Mike. I want to thank. Um, Kathy Moran and, and Kim Gibson on that too, because they got together and worked with um, the director of nurses, uh, Linda Cahill, yes. to put that all in place. So I, I want to thank them for that as well. Thank and you. That's no, one I... group. That's one group. There are nurses physically coming into work as well. Um, so again, I really appreciate that they jumped right in when the mayor and and um, John McGarry needed them. So we really appreciate that. Are there any, thanks again, Superintendent. Are there any questions from um, the subcommittee of the school committee relative to the agenda item relative to the MOUs? So we'll move on if we could to uh, number four on the agenda, which is DESE and federal guidelines for paying transportation vendors and out of district schools. And I know Aldo kind of touched upon that, but let's, we'll stay on track with the agenda. Mr. Petronio. So yes, I can jump in quickly. Thanks, um, and then I'll let Aldo jump in. Um, so basically there are guidelines that came from the $2 trillion package from the federal government um, that have something to do with transportation. Um, and also there are DESC put guidelines out urging districts to pay their transportation providers in um, the out of district schools. But as the mayor stated earlier and Aldo as well, uh, without some kind of executive order or uh, a ruling from the attorney general, um, you know, we need to wait legally, wait to see where this goes. So um, and in absence of that guide, that, you know, that order, executive order or something from the attorney general, um, it's right now, it's still illegal for us to put, to, to be able to pay these bills. So uh, we'll keep you posted on that going forward. Um, and I know the mayor is getting updates constantly from the state and the governor's office. So, um, and he keeps us posted and we keep him posted back and forth. So. If there's any news on that, we'll we'll update you as soon as it comes out. Um, thank you, Mike. It's, it's Tom again, Tom Minicello. Hi, Tom. Hey, um, our contract is coming up with for a student, isn't it? It has one more year. Okay. I mean, I just I just obviously want to point out that you know, if um, if if we end up being totally or viewed as totally unreasonable. Don't and we all know um, that we don't get a plethora of other companies offering to take our bid on. You know that, or well, you can anticipate that um, negotiations. Nope. Last to Mr. Manicello. Yeah. No. You know, so I just think that we need to wait and see what you know Jesse has to say but understand that there needs to be some give and take on both on both sides I guess thank you Tom and, and again I think I think you know we'll we'll be reasonable and we're ready willing and able but again without the guidelines at this point it's a little premature but I we, we hear what you say I heard what Tim Sullivan said as well so um, any other questions relative to that agenda item for the superintendent or for Mr. Petronio? Yeah, um, Aldo. Or, or, you know, please. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering, you know, we we're saying that you know, we've got, unfortunately, Desi saying we should pay them. We'd like to pay them. Um, and we need the attorney general or the governor to give us the uh, legal authority to pay them do we know, and I apologize if you mentioned this already, is the attorney general or the governor even looking at this right now? Is this even on their radar? Are they, were we expecting any kind of uh, guidance from them anytime soon on this? All I've spoken with on that state level is the Department of Ed. 
So as far as they know, it's it's made its way to the governor's office, but no rulings, no no uh, recommendations have come down yet on how to handle it. And I think it's because you know they themselves would have to vote to somehow circumvent the law or change the law for for this to happen. Um, you know, I've I've had calls with first student. Um, I think it was their attorney maybe who called me today, but I'll get back to them tomorrow. My my one my very first question is going to be: Are your drivers collecting unemployment? We need to know that because with what's happening now between unemployment, us, and the federal bailout, they could potentially receive money from three sources. So we need to be assured that they're not. Um, I mean, that, that would be aside from the, the governor or the attorney general saying we will allow these payments to happen. If they do allow, then we're going to have to have a negotiation. And since this is non-net school funding, the mayor and city council have, you know, have to weigh in on it. This is not educational dollars. If it was just educational dollars, the Department of Ed could, could kind of dictate, but it's not. This is, again, this is city money. This is local money. That's a good point. So really, it's not even like Desi has the ability to give us the okay when it's not even their money. Okay. All right. I was just curious. Uh, if Mr. Mr. Right Mr. Mr. Vice Chairman, I can also say, I mean, my conversations with the governor and, and often with the lieutenant governor, um, this hasn't come up yet in terms of priorities right now. It's trying to figure out quarantine sites, isolation sites, dealing with the homeless with Mima and DPH. So um, I, I'm not saying that they're not considering it. I just know that in my most recent conversations, that hasn't been a topic at this time. Thank you. Any other questions relative to this agenda item from anybody? We'll move on then. Um, the next one is number five, which is school bus purchase. Mr. Superintendent, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I know that um, you've been um, in, in Troy Clarkson have, have been working on this with Aldo. So I just wanted the committee to know that this was um, something obviously we were looking into before um, uh, COVID-19 hit us. Um, but I wanted you to know, and I'll let the mayor jump in, that this um, they haven't stopped working on this because obviously this is a cost-cutting um, uh, measure and a um, savings, which obviously we're always looking for. So um, I know that Aldo uh, and the mayor had a conversation with Troy either today or yesterday, yep. uh, and I'll let I'll let the mayor jump in and, and fill you in on that. Yeah, I mean, so um, when we started these discussions, of course. Um, we presented it, um, school committee, and, and I've spoken it uh, informally to the city council during city council meetings. Um, you know, we're not, um, we're not halting or putting the, the brakes on this endeavor at this time. Um, we are uh, looking at different sources of revenue um, on the city side and school side that might be able to supplement uh, the acquisition of some of these. As you know, we originally had planned to uh, acquire eight school buses. Uh, with a projection of about 10 to 12 years, we'd have a full, complete uh, fleet, uh, and we could control our own destiny in terms of dollar amounts. It'd be huge cost savings. Uh, right now, I can tell you that um, my conversation this morning uh, with Troy Clarkson and with Aldo was that we're still looking at this. Um, we're not sure about the actual hard number of acquisition. Originally, based upon the um, bonding that we were going to do, amortizing it over 20 or 30 years with a, such a great interest rate, it made sense to acquire eight to 10 of these this year. Um, however, we were going to have a drop dead date of, uh, of mid April to order these so that we'd have the buses ready to go with the opening of school in September. Um, that's probably going to be a slow down. Um, with the idea of um, we need to see how this shapes out if May 4th. Uh, is it an actual date where we'd be going back to school or uh, are we looking at not going back to school um, this this calendar year for, for academics? And that's the unknown, but I can tell you that um, acquiring school buses uh, will happen um, because it makes business sense and practical sense. We just don't know how many we'll be able to acquire this year due to the, the, uh, the health crisis. Aldo, do you want to offer anything else? You pretty much covered it all there. The um, Even if we don't get the buses ordered by mid-April, they'll still arrive shortly after the first, and we'll be using them for you know, for sports, for uh, the band, the the, um, the the other activities, the field trips that we use. We'll be using them for special ed runs, for homeless runs, things that we've got some power to manipulate with. So if we don't have them the first day of school, we can still phase them in in October and still be able to save money for the district. And again, Absolutely. the whole... 
the whole purpose is to, um, you know, to spend money wisely, you know, fiscal responsibility, but then also kind of uh, think of long-term range, which would be to actually have a fleet. Uh, you know, Mike won't be the superintendent and I won't be the mayor at that time, <laughs> but we'll get there at some point. And um, again, I just wanted to give you an update. And I do thank all though, and on the city side, Troy Claxon, because uh, even though my priority right now is the health and safety and general welfare of the citizens of Brock, and we still have to continue business and think outside the box of next steps when we do recover from this pandemic. So any questions of any school committee members relative to this matter? None? We'll go on to the next uh, agenda item, which is number six. It's fiscal year 2021. Uh, Mr. Superintendent, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we do really we don't really have any information on um, um, next year's budget other than what we got from the governor's budget but obviously being what's going on um, at this time i think we need to be very conservative uh, and protect what the district currently has so um, i am recommending um, that we put the 93 positions that we voted on approximately one month ago those were bea much needed teaching, adjustment counselors, um, and other BEA positions. Um, and I just think at this time, we just need to hold on any hiring of those positions. None of them have, have been hired yet. Um, I did have this conversation as well with um, Kip Gibson. Uh, and again, uh, we need to go into, I think right now, protection mode and protect what the, the system currently has. Um, and with such an uncertain time, um, and I, I'm not saying that we will cut any money or we will be cut any money from the state, but I think we need to be ready for anything. Um, so I am suggesting that we hold on those 93 positions right now, because uh, none of them have been filled. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Any questions about, um, about this matter for the superintendent? Just a comment. Sure. Uh, first, I, I think it does make sense, unfortunately, even though We've been holding for so long and needed those positions for so long. I think it, it does make sense. But the other thing is, remember one of our concerns was we wanted to be at those hiring fairs early instead of, you know, hiring late. Well, nobody's at, there's no hiring fairs. There's no, you know, so none of this is happening. So it doesn't really hurt us if we delay and then have to wait until later. And we do decide, yes, we can still move forward with those positions. You know, we'll still be, um, it right in there with all the other districts that usually are way ahead of us. So um, it, it doesn't really hurt us to hold off. Any other questions or comments relative to this matter? If, if I could, Mr. Mayor, this is Aldo. Sure, sure Aldo. Um, I had a conversation on Saturday with Representative Claire Cronin, um, basically asking her uh, what's happening with the, the schedule. There's usually a timeline in place for approving the governor's budget to the House budget to the Senate budget. Is that still following the same track? Are we looking at a delay? And she said, right now there's no delay, but their concentration right now, everyone is on the on the healthcare systems in Massachusetts. They're about, their focus is making sure that the healthcare system doesn't doesn't basically collapse under the weight of what's going on. And for the next week or two, was they're they're expecting the the virus to come to its peak. Um, that's where their concentration is. So she had no update for me on that. Um, I gave her some of my financial philosophy on how to handle this, um, which I in turn learned from Jay Condon of all, all my years, um, that hopefully she'll pass along uh, when they meet, but hopefully they'll have some update for us shortly. Thank you, Mr. Petronio. Any other questions? One question. Go ahead, Mr. Sullivan, please. If Mr. Thomas, are you still there? Yes, I am. On the 93 teachers and the there was three or four custodians. I mean, uh, no, it was para seven, seven paraprofessionals. Would I know you said you didn't want to hire them? What do you want to, do? You need another vote again when we do hire them, or what will happen? No, I just, I just think we need a vote to uh, and and just to be clear, I, I absolutely want to hire these people. I just think it's fiscally responsible for us just to hold on that right now. So I think it would be good to take a vote. Uh, hold on the 93 positions, and I believe it was, Aldo, you can correct me, I think it was six paraprofessionals that was, go and those paraprofessionals were gonna, that was gonna give every kindergarten classroom a full-time paraprofessional back, and that was six. So 
I just think it's at this time, and again, these were positions that we, we needed and still need. Um, that need is not going away. However, I just think for this time, and I think we need a vote just to hold on those positions and see where this goes over the next month to six weeks. I'd like to make a motion if I could. Uh, do, would we, I'm just thinking back to my city council days, but would we take a, a formal vote on a subcommittee or would we wait until next Tuesday with the full school committee? We could recommend that to the full school yeah, committee. We could do, yep, yeah. that we could, that we could do that. We could take a vote here of the subcommittee, favorable recommendation back to the full school committee. So Mr. Sullivan, you're making a motion. Yes, the motion would be uh, to put on hold the 93 teachers and the six or seven Paris that we already approved. Put it on hold to a later date when we need them. A motion on the floor made by Mr. Sullivan. It was seconded by Mr. D'Agostino. I need to take a roll call vote uh, because it was properly seconded. So I'll, I'll read it down right now if I could, please. The chair, Mr. Sullivan says yes. Mr. D'Agostino. Yes. Ms. Azak. Yes. Ms. Mendez. Yes. Mr. Minicello. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. That is a unanimous vote uh, and it's a favorable recommendation as voted upon back to the school committee member, uh, school, full school committee. And we'll, we'll note that in the minutes and we'll take a formal vote next Tuesday. Any other, and, any other questions? And the only thing else I got under FY um, 2020, um, one is the, um, the Student Opportunity Act plan um, has been, um, we have been granted by the, well, the, through an email, the Department of Education said that we did not have to submit that on April 1st, uh, which was yesterday. Um, they're allowing us to hold and delay that, and we, that's either going to be held to May 1st or um, June 1st. So that ruling we haven't got yet is actually when the due date is, but as of right now, that um, the plan that we need to submit for the, um, the Student Opportunity Act is on hold. So, but we will continue as we, when we pretty much, um, it's, we've been obviously putting all our, our time into online learning and making sure we can do what we need to do to support our students at home. Um, but um, we'll obviously get to work on the Student Opportunity Act again, and um, we'll obviously talk about it and, um, a few subcommittee meetings before obviously we submit any plan and obviously get the school committee vote as well um, before that's submitted. But I should know next week whether it will be due on May 1st or June 1st. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Any questions of the superintendent relative to that? Mike, could you just give us an, uh, an update relative to MCAS and where we stand on that, please? So MCAS is um, being canceled for um, grades three to eight. That's the recommendation of the, um, the commissioner. Um, and then he's held on canceling the 10th grade MCAS. Um, you know, I don't, I think that will be coming soon, but um, we'll see what, that, what happens with that. But that's where we are right now. And Thank that's, you. he's pretty much, that's gonna be made formal by the, um, by the state, because um, that's a law. So um, they're waiting on that vote, which should take place pretty soon, but it is, the recommendation of the, the uh, commissioner to cancel three to eight and then, but we're holding still on, uh, no decision has been made on the 10th grade MCAS yet. Ms. Ms. Mendez, you have a question? Yes, um, okay. so in the case that 10th grade MCAS is canceled, so 10th grade, it's a requirement to be able to get your high school diploma. How would we reschedule for them to be able to make that MCAS? Would they have to take it next year with the, with the freshmen now that will be 10th graders next year? Um, that would be my guess, but again, that would have to come directly from the DESC. There's been really no talk about that at all. Um, so that's why, um, so until they actually officially cancel uh, the 10th grade MCAS, um, they won't give us any information about what they're gonna do with that for, for these 10th, current 10th graders. And, how would they uh, take that uh, test next year? Uh, they haven't. They haven't uh, addressed that part yet. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mendez. Any other questions relative to uh, the agenda item fiscal 2021 for the superintendent? 
Seeing none, we'll go on to the last ag agenda item, which is number seven, which is new business. Is there any new business before the subcommittee? One question. Mr. Sullivan, please. Yes, Mr. Mayor, is there, has there anything been thought of or done yet on the, the junior prom, the senior prom, uh, graduation? Has, or is we still, anything done yet on that? To my I knowledge, jump in. Yeah, Mike, you can jump in, go ahead. Yeah. So basically nothing, um, we basically has, have everything, everything has been, we've done nothing beyond May 4th. So whatever was supposed to, supposed to take place before May 4th has been postponed. Um, any of the big um, things that students do, proms, graduation, obviously it's the, the biggest one, uh, the musical, um, all the things that the great things students love. I'd rather, you know, not make any, so any, everything has just basically been postponed up until May 4th. Um, if we are able to return to school, we will, and I want parents and everybody to know, we will make every effort to have every activity we can possibly have for kids. I think that's very important. Um, graduation, obviously, number one. Um, some kind of um, prom or, or event for our high school juniors and seniors, and all the other great things the kids do eighth grade concerts, the musical at Brockton High. Um, obviously, things will have to be modified because we just obviously haven't had the time to rehearse and practice, but um, we will do whatever we can to make sure the things that kids and families love. Uh, to have those those activities. Um, and again, we just have to wait to see where this goes. So at this time, nothing has been canceled, just postponed. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Any other questions uh, for the superintendent um, relative to new business? I, hey, think, I have, uh, um, go ahead, Mike. I just want to say that, I, you know, I really want to thank uh, the executive team, uh, June Saber McGuire and Sharon Wolder, Ethan Cancel, Aldo Petronio, Kathy Moran, uh, Jim Cobbs, uh, Jess Hodges, uh, communications director, our principals, uh, Kim Gibson, um, you know, the DEA, the food service workers, um, you know, and uh, facility staff, Ken Thompson, Jamie Domestico, um, and everybody has been working really hard. Um, and he, even though we're doing most of it remotely, um, the efforts have been amazing. Um, I, and I do ask parents for their patience. We are working as hard as we can to um, pretty much we're asked to change the way we educate 17,000 students um, and something that, um, and pretty much we have to do that online. And by the way, try to get, try to get that done in three weeks. So, um, you know, uh, it, would ha it would be very difficult to get that done over three years. So, um, you know, the efforts that are going into that, the laptop distribution, um, scrambling around to try to provide every opportunity for every student, um, and what everybody has been doing, um, all members of the Brockton Public Schools has been amazing. And um, as the, the next two weeks come, parents will see drastic improvements in what they see online and activities for kids. And I've seen videos from teachers and the things that they're doing, reaching out to the students as long as guidance counselors and adjustment counselors. So I really appreciate all their efforts. It's been nothing short of amazing. Um, and uh, I really appreciate it for something that Again, none of us have been trained to do. Uh, we've been protecting everything over the last 10 years of whatever we can do inside the classroom. And now we have to do a complete 180 and figure out how we can educate and support uh, students and families online. And, you know, by the way, try to get that done within a month. So, um, and, I, and I also want to make a point, and Sharon and I taught, and Sharon brings this up often as she should, um, is that what this is doing um, socially and emotionally to our, to our students. Um, my own kids are really struggling with this. Um, and this is a very difficult time. And Sharon is, continues to talk about that. And, and that's something we really have to consider whenever we are allowed to come back to school. Um, obviously, instruction is important, but we're really going to have to spend a lot of time on how we support our kids uh, socially and emotionally, not only our kids, but our, our faculty and staff as well. because. This is not only have been hard on, on our kids, um, but on our, fa our staff and our families. So we're gonna have to really concentrate on um, focusing on that when, whenever we're allowed to come, you know, come back to school. We're doing a lot of that supporting kids uh, and families through you know, online and, and through um, phone calls, but 
you know, that's something we're going to have to talk a lot about when we're able to return to school because uh, there's a lot of damage being done um, to families and to, um, and to kids. And we got to keep that in the forefront and make sure we're ready to support each other. Thank you very much, Mr. Superintendent. And I know everybody on this call echoes the same sentiments. Um, you know, we, we, we will eventually get back to normal, uh, whatever that is. But um, I do want to thank everybody that's on this call. We're really, we really are working as a collaborative team to, to better uh, Brockton, the community we all call home. Uh, I know uh, Richard Bath is on this uh, as well. I want to thank you, Mr. Bath, for what you're doing and everybody that the superintendent just mentioned. Um, I do want to specifically also thank Melinda Campbell, uh, who is spending hours and hours setting this up. This isn't a normal type of situation. And also Mike Simmons at Brockton Community Access. Uh, without BCA and, and Mike's uh, professionalism and no techn technological knowledge, we wouldn't be able to do this. So uh, we owe a big thanks. And um, before I, I take a motion to adjourn, is there any other questions for the superintendent tonight? And may no I also want to thank... I also want to thank the school committee as well for, you know, they're, they're always reaching out to families. They're always providing us with information on how we can help families. And uh, I thank you for that because uh, you hear things sometimes that we don't, and that will help us um, help you. And we all work together. So I appreciate your input uh, and, and always being in contact and easy to reach and always giving, um, you know, obviously advocating for your fam the families that you represent as well. Um, so I appreciate that. It's important for all to get as much information as possible about families that are struggling so we can do the best we can to help everyone. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Mr. Sullivan, followed by Mr. Rodriguez. Yes, I just wanted to give a, a thank you to you, Mr. Mayor, uh, the Superintendent, Mike Thomas, and to Mark D'Agostino. I was just thinking to myself, what a time to be in charge of anything. This is probably the worst time ever. But the three years are doing a real good job. And if I could give a shout out to the, the people I work with every day at the Raymond School, Christine Pyrus, Debbie Rooney, Michelle Sergio, Mary Marino, Laura Schaffelli, Lee Hendricks, and Mike the Chef, which is Mike Dombrowski. And a special shout out to the, uh, the people who helped me set up the computer. Melissa Murray and her kids, especially Kyle. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Rodriguez. I just want to take this moment. Uh, thank you, Mike, uh, you and the executive team. I know you guys are working tirelessly to uh, make sure all the uh, students in the city of Brockton, all their uh, educational uh, needs are met. Um, I also want to, you know, you know, give a, you know, a big shout out to all the teachers uh, across the city that are posting the, uh, their message on Facebook and, you know, letting the students know that they miss them and they're thinking about them. Um, that's, that's real big, you know, hopefully uh, some of the parents that are on social media are sharing that messages with the, with the younger kids that, that are not allowed to get on social media. So um, I was happy to, uh, to see most of them that I could see sharing them on social media accounts and hopefully everybody, uh, on the school committee, uh, elected officials that um, on social media can uh, share the message and make sure it gets to these students and letting them know that, you know, we are here working for them. Thank you, Tony. Any other uh, statements? Well, on behalf of the school committee, uh, we want to- uh, Hi there, it's, it's Tom Minichello, how are you? Go ahead, Tom. Um, I'd like to thank the, uh, the, the PAC members all throughout the city because they, the parents have been very, vocal in terms of trying to have creative ways for teachers to be able to reach their students. Uh, in particular, over at um, Hancock, uh, Karen Donovan made, um, made an inquiry of me and I approached Superintendent Thomas about it in terms of having teachers be able to just read stories to their students over Facebook and be able to reach out to their, their kids. And before, um, you know, we had uh, a meeting with um, Kim Gibson and Mike, uh, and the executive team, you know, Mike was very open to it. And, you know, it just shows. I think we lost you, Tom. To basically reach out to the kids and, and, and get, uh, you know, get, get into their lives and make sure the kids feel, you know, secure. And, uh, you know, it's just a positive thing. A bad thing comes out, from bad things come out, come positive things. And this is what uh, Brockton's all about and always been about.
Thank you, Tom. And I could just, for my own, uh, my own family, of course, I have three young children. Um, the teachers are calling our home to speak to the kids. Uh, principals, of course, are calling as well. And that's across the whole school district. So um, really, people really are stepping up uh, and working really uh, in such a positive manner during a tough, difficult time. But I do, uh, on behalf of the school committee, I want to uh, wish uh, the superintendent's daughter a happy 12th birthday. Um, I want Mike to only have one piece of cake tonight. Michael, only one piece of cake, please. Um, but again, is there any, anybody else that wants to say anything before I entertain a motion to adjourn? Could I uh, entertain a motion? Could someone make a motion to adjourn and we get a second, please? Motion to adjourn. Motion second. Made, motion made. It was properly seconded. Uh, we'll take a roll call vote to adjourn, and then we'll adjourn the meeting tonight. Again, thank you. Uh, the chair says yes. Mr. D'Agostino? Yes. Ms. Azak? Yes. Ms. Mendez? Yes. Mr. Minicello? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. We had a unanimous vote. We will be adjourning. I wish you all a good evening and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you.